Exactly. I think that might be the best idea. <laughs> um, welcome to another episode of Crook and Murder. I am your host, Kenny Crook Irish Kirby. Uh, you may know me as the guy who's patiently waiting on Zelda to come out. Uh, I am joined today by Maxwell Murder, my co-host. I'm Maxwell Murder, and you may know me as the guy who was sitting outside today playing his uh, Steam Deck and getting really excited about Hogwarts Legacy. <laughs> And I'm also joined today by a special guest, as always, Alex. And uh, I'm special guest Alex. You may know me from the man of many flatulence. What a great picture for them, with you and your bed and everything. Uh, All right, Max, you ready to just, kick this off? I am, yeah. He, Alex is just making an oven under there. Okay. Uh, Dutch oven, see. man. But um bump The flying right, I'm Dutch gonna oven. I think Kirby could do this better, but I'm going to do my best, all right? I I'm asking. Do you... well, let me try it. Let me try it. All right. Let me just. <laughs> I've asked you, mateys. Arr. You're ready for an adventure into the high seas. You may recognize it from Scooby Doo, SpongeBob, and Pirates of the Caribbean. That's right. Today we're discussing the Flying Dutchman, a ghost ship from the depths of hell. That was all right. Good. Yeah. Very cool. It was no. It was no Jack Sparrow, but I'm also. And just for anybody that's confused, I just want you to know that SpongeBob is in reference to SpongeBob SquarePants. And Scooby Doo. I don't remember the whole show name of Scooby Doo, but I think it's like Scooby Doo Mysteries or something like that. So just, just in case anybody was confused. Just by the way, I hate Scooby Doo. I always have since I was a kid. You know, I want to do a quick shout out for a mod that we haven't shouted Ooh, out yet. Fuck yeah. Uh, because she arrived back on my channel today. Um, welcome back to the channel, Dizzy. And it's great to have you uh, modding for us. Guys, go check out her channel. That is spelled 8 I G D Z. Um, give her a follow. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get on All with right. the ghost ship story yeah i love the ghost ship story again scooby-doo i wasn't even convinced when i was five which is like well where like... were you scooby-doo a bump. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna fucking tired tonight i won't even let my kids watch it <laughs> all right so the flying dutchman as you may have uh sort of gleaned uh, is a ghost ship. So it was a 17th century fleet sailing under the colors of the Dutch East Indian Company. I was in my Dutch accent. I can't do it. The Dutch East India Company uh, were a huge merchant. Uh, they were they had a monopoly on all trade to Asia um, and all sea routes. They actually struck their own coins, I found out. They had their own currency. They're also the first uh, company to be to be sold on an open market people could buy shares in it yeah they were their they were almost their own fucking country the dutch east india trading like company ran a shit ton of like uh ships back and forth in the caribbean and shit in fact i'm pretty sure it's the same company that jack sparrow runs a uh foul of in pirates of the caribbean yeah they could start wars i think they were better than a com country because they didn't have the constraints that like constituents give you. They were just a company that could like start a war. They could like execute prisoners. They could do whatever the fuck they wanted to. So good for the Dutch. God, you know that uh, Jeff Bezos is like, why don't we live in those times? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think he does anything now except for fly spaceships that look like dicks. Hey but, guys, yeah. guys, he could offer real. Free shipping. <laughs> free because they're ships. You know, yeah, yes, yeah, I get that one. It's a good one. Uh -huh. um, he could also maybe fix, you know, when he was at Amazon, I feel like I got deliveries a lot easier. And then when he left, I didn't. So I don't know about that. What, what happened there? You know, I have two banjos because, oh no, three banjos. Because you didn't have the wrath of the devil fucking breathing <laughs> down your neck. So everyone's exactly. like, oh, all right, we can. We can slow it down just a bit. Amazon lost two banjos 
And then they showed up. I got three banjos for the price of zero banjos. Listen, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure Amazon's a mafia. I used to live with like this dude that worked for like the warehouse. Oh and yeah. I'd be like, hey, so what goes on down at Amazon? And he's like, Well, people that speak bad against the con- like company or go yeah. against their wishes. Oh, don't do that. Just disappear. <laughs> <laughs> so Max, when when was the fl- when was the Flying Dutchman returning from? When did this all kind of take okay. place? All right, we'll get into this. According to the legend, the <laughs> ship was returning from a routine voyage in 1641. The captain Hendrik van der Deckern. Yeah, De- God damn, Decken, that's Dutch. I know, right? Was uh, eager to reach the shores of Amsterdam. Um, Amsterdam was not as fun back then as it is now. Uh, you don't know that. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure I still want to go to Amsterdam back then. Comparison that you can't fucking compare. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna say that there are a bunch of fucking like Calvinists that didn't wear anything but black clothes and executed anyone who wasn't a Calvinist. So yeah, that so, might have okay, been fun well, for some people. <laughs> what? We're just gonna mock Amsterdam's emo phase. <laughs> emo face <laughs> these are the good. these are the people that like oh th- they were so religious like fundamentalists that the pilgrims had to come to america <laughs> um let's see <laughs> thus okay so this guy uh hendrik van der decken what a dick uh he recklessly uh, took the shortest route possible to get back to his motherland of Amsterdam around the Cape of Good Hope. Where is that? South Africa? Uh, it's, uh, I no, think it that's is. that's Cape Horn. No, all right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's called the Cape of Good Hope, but it doesn't really bring good hope. <laughs> like ever Capes to never, anybody. Capes never do, if you're talking sea-wise. Um, this would mark the final living voyage of the ship. I like that you put in living there. Um, <laughs> however, a fearful storm brewed up as the captain was th- the captain threaded his way through the passage. I really want to know where this is. His terrified crew begged the captain to turn back. The seas were too dangerous. The captain told everyone, "Fuck off!" In Dutch. I'm gonna Some find out play- where the Cape of Good Hope is. Yeah, oh, it is South thanks. Africa. Uh, yeah, it, it's South it? Africa. Oh, okay. So it's like going around the like under Africa and then coming back up to wait, was he going this way or that way? Wait, where's Cape Horn then? Is that South America? Think, oh, you I know, think... we actually get we, we have an entire section where we talk about the Cape of Good. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Cape Horn is South Africa. I yeah. mean um South America. Okay. Cape Horn is Chile. Good hope is South Africa. Gotcha, okay. My either point. way, either way, that's like both those are like a con- continents touching, basically, and that creates bad weather. Yeah, they're pegging each other. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, sorry, docking. They're docking. Docking. They're docking. I was just gonna correct you on that. Actually, Kirby, me and you, Crook, and Murder are like we're like this. Um, and then I'm like <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. God In the corner. Damn it. See, see, Crook, what the fuck? Crook and Crook. Crook and Murder are like this, and then Alex is like this. <laughs> Man, that's good. Okay. Um, <laughs> against sound reasoning, Vander Decken steered his ship into the storm. The crew, realizing death was at hand, mutinied in a desperate bid to take control of the ship. Captain Vander Decken, <laughs> Decken, it's such a stupid name. Beat them all off. Yes, he did. An Alex move. Yep. yep. And s- <laughs> slew the rebel leader, throwing his body overboard. Turning towards the, the the traitorous crew, he declared that he would complete the journey around the Cape, even if it took him till doomsday. What Immediately. A... <laughs> yeah, Just what a bastard. <laughs> <laughs> these historical these historical stories always involve some like. Really entitled white guy. Look, we will I, do I, it even if it means we're all gonna die. I do <laughs> want to point out that this is 1641 Amsterdam, and clearly this guy wants to get back there. So I think that place had something going on during that time. 
I'm guessing that his crew were a bunch of guys that got shanghaied into, like, working on his fucking ship. So he's got a press gang of, like, you know, undesirables, and he's wearing all black, and he's got that buckle on his hat, you know, the top, you know? Oh, like and he's saying, Yeah, exactly. And he's, he's, say, he's saying, we're going around the Cape, and they're saying, why did you make us sail this ship, you asshole? <laughs> I mean, and, yeah, that's essentially what's going on here. Yeah. I, I I bet he probably has, like, his cape flowing in the breeze, and he's just oh, like, yeah. Yar, we're taking the cape. Fuck the winds, you know? He, no, nah, he's, God, he's a Calvinist. So, again, he's just, he's probably this. Well, how just... do you know he's a Calvinist? Because they all were. If he was a captain, he was an officer. So whoa, that means whoa, he was whoa, a dick. Whoa, whoa, Can whoa, we whoa. not generalize, please? Yeah. I you know what? There are varying <laughs> degrees of people in this world, okay? Different shades of gray, bro. Someone might have been Protestant. So, so. <laughs> that that would have been the British. Uh, the Calvinist. I know they were. Uh, they're like Lutheran, right? Basically, but like hardcore Lutheran, the bad, the bad kind of Lutherans. Yeah. So he's just sitting there stoic you know, reading his Bible, we can make it through the Cape. And his crew of misfits, of his press gang, are like, why are we even fucking here? There's a continent that we can go to right there. We're going to fuck fuck Europe. That's Africa. We're going I'm, there. Uh, presuming, Actually, presuming that he was that religious, that kind of makes what happens next pretty fucking hilarious. Yes. Okay, hold up. <laughs> First of all, he was not doing... Look, all right. <laughs> I'm going to have to disagree with you on this one, Max. Oh, uh, okay, okay. When, when he says, like, straight up, you know, complete the journey around the Cape, even it took until doomsday, he wasn't sitting there reading a Bible and sipping tea. He was screaming at the winds. This guy was defying <laughs> God. That is the leader of the Flying Dutchman. Uh, okay, okay. He was a straight, like, close to pirate. Uh, I mean, yeah, all right. I, I'll agree with you. Because you, you don't look death in the eye and then... Do we got a fucking portrait of this asshole? What, the Flying Dutchman? No. Vander Deckern. No. Ah. All right. Okay. Anyways, okay. Kirby, I'll, I'm with you. Um, Let's see. Where were we? Immediately after uttering this curse, an angel appeared before the captain, uh, ch challenging him. The captain... Listened to the word of God and had a change of heart, saving himself and the crew in the process. That's why it's called the Cape of Good Hope today. Oh, that makes me feel better. Yeah. Just kidding. He shot at the angel, effectively <laughs> sealing his fate. <laughs> the fates of himself, the crew, and the ship. Whoops. Whoopsie doodle. The dude shot a pistol at the angel. This is why I think he's like straight up right, okay. a pirate, dude. Because uh, yeah, <laughs> it's like uh, he just said "fuck you." Like this, the the very God themselves revealed Himself to him and went, "Dude, this is a bad idea." And he was just like, "You're just God. What do you know?" And shot his pistol at it. Well, okay, I mean, <laughs> I I'm getting the feel. I I'll agree with you somewhat, but I I also think there's a there's a world that or an alternate universe or something where he's very pious and then he reads revelations and starts yelling about doomsday and uh shoots at an angel <laughs> yeah i could see that uh alternate <laughs> dimension yeah I, I i he's either jack sparrow or he's the witch hunter general i don't know <laughs> or captain eli blood i would think more barbosa type you know like ooh, and ooh. uh Pirates of the Caribbean three, where he rides into the storm. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty bitching. You know, those movies aren't that bad, and it was. It's unfortunate that Johnny Depp didn't make one because he got sued by a crazy person. Yeah, I. I don't know. I mean, I hope he comes back. Well, I, if you want to watch his, I best will say I. I don't want to take sides or start this debate. It's but... not a debate. He didn't do anything. She's a horrible person. Okay, but <laughs> let's face it, Johnny Depp is a little off his fucking rockers. Like, some yeah. of the fucking stories about Johnny Depp, 
Yeah, of course he is. I'm I'm not taking sides or anything, but... I'm I'm taking sides. Watch the trial in Virginia. It's his best performance ever. The judge loved him. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously. The judge just could not get enough of him. And the reason he lost in England is because England has very different libel laws than we do. So, uh, anyways, he'll come back. But, again, if you want to watch his best performance, better than uh, 21 Jump Street, better than uh, uh, fucking lo- uh, Fear and Loathing, it's that trial. <laughs> He's hilarious. <laughs> The judge, oh, the judge, the, and Amber Heard's lawyers are terrible. Like the, they, they, they are, yeah, they were. They're really fucking bad. horrible. Um, and she took a dump on his bed. Who takes a dump on someone's bed? Yeah, it is really weird. Yeah, I am or, curious to know what that poop looked like, though. Well, definitely, he he made it very clear it wasn't dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was very very positive it was human feces. <laughs> <laughs> so He's while that's probably, uh, probably, he probably tasted it <laughs> dude oh my god all right let's move along once we start talking about eating human shit we should probably move it along like this tastes like my girlfriend's asshole <laughs> <laughs> okay okay i'm done i'm done sorry <laughs> i don't know how i made myself crack up um, all right. In a different version of the legend, the devil appears to the crew, condemning the them. The devil. The who? The who? The, who? the what? Satan. The devil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. The devil oh, got it. Yeah, much clearer. Thanks. <laughs> the devil. <laughs> you, I, that's the metal. That's the metal pronunciation. Condemning them to sail the seas for all eternity. Though unlike the angel, the devil gets the captain to get out of <laughs> to get a get out of jail free clause. Every seven years, the captain is permitted to make landfall for a day, and if he can produce the love of a faithful woman during that time, the ship will be free of the curse. So I just want like, what a shitty deal for the captain because oh. like the devil ain't gonna make a deal that he knows he's on the fucking wrong side of. So he must have met this fucking Van Dieter dick and been like, Wow, you are a real, real piece of shit. <laughs> I know something that even for eternity you won't yeah. be able to fucking do. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. The fucking first incel in history. I know. <laughs> You know, okay, so this this is kind of important uh, to note here. Uh, the devil actually offered him a deal. He was like, hey, uh, if you could do this, you'll get out of your, you know, contract. And it's kind of a bullshit contract, sure. But God just said, fuck him. <laughs> he was well, just like, I, yeah. boom. He didn't shoot the devil. <laughs> he, shot, he shot the angel. Um, I mean... <laughs> Honestly, Seven security forces just sniped his boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know why that got me so good. It's really good. Just that image in my head, like 1641 fucking <laughs> sniper forces, <laughs> like three dudes in a rowboat with muskets, like get closer. <laughs> We're too far away. <laughs> Stop rowing. I gotta pack my musket. <laughs> Oh man, fucking jeez. Uh he- heaven's got a PMC, you know, private military contractor that they use and those are the you know, the angels that that are that's they're, they're kind of like the A team, you know, like Mr. T, the A team. <laughs> the A team. All right. Whether a demon or an angel cursed the captain, the result was the same. The Flying Dutchman, its crew and its captain are now forced to sail the seven seas until doomsday. The ghostly ship is said to appear above the horizon or emerging from the depths of the sea. If spotted, it is considered an omen of impending doom. I love so omens. I, I do have, like, a serious question. It yeah. keeps saying doomsday. It like, does. Are we, are we just talking, like, Ragnarok? Like, what is, like, does uh, the Bible have a doomsday yeah, in it? Revelations, man, the last book. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. but okay, Revelations yeah, yeah, yeah. already took place in Greek times. 
<laughs> so, I mean, like, I guess he didn't really sell too long. Well, it actually, it took place in, in a lot of times. <laughs> uh, Some would you say want, it's taking place right now. If you, I mean, the guy who wrote it was, was on it. He was, he was a Jewish guy who was ex- exiled to an island by himself that I think had, like, psilocybin mushrooms growing in it. So he wrote the Book of Revelations all lonesome, high on whatever, and uh, they were actually, like, when they were putting the Bible together, they had, uh, they had, they needed an ending, right? So there were six different books in contention for Revelations. <laughs> so it's not and really... And they the guy tripping balls? <laughs> yeah. They, no, they picked the medalist one. They were like... Oh shit! The devil's gonna show up, and he's gonna have like nine heads, and he's gonna be a fucking dragon, and then the Antichrist is gonna eat him. What? It fucking smells <laughs> like Teen Spirit is gonna be playing in the background. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's the, yeah. If you want to read about it, it's a pretty, it's a pretty interesting read. How the Book of Revelation just ended up in the Bible. Um, I think I think what was it? Uh, Peter. The apostle was one of the guys who was like put put it together. I think he was just like, man, this guy knows how to rock. I bet he fucking he's a m- master on the axe. <laughs> Jack Black hasn't been born yet. We'll have to wait. <laughs> exactly. he, it was actually Jack Black. I don't know if you knew this, but it, he's um he's immortal. That makes wow. sense. Yeah. Really? Well. Not really anymore. He does like goosebumps and stuff. But back when he was in the D, he was immortal. Hey, Goosebumps oh, wasn't a bad film. It was actually. No, actually, made... I'm sorry. I shouldn't diss on it. It was really good. It was made a lot better uh, because of Jack Black, though. Yeah, I would agree. And it, it really, I read all his books when I was a kid, and it was pretty, pretty good, pretty, pretty good on the source material. But, anyways. Um, so, are there multiple okay. sightings of the Flying Dutchman? Yes, there are. Sorry, I was just thinking about Tenacious D for some reason. I couldn't get it out of my head. That's how metal they are. All right, so so there's been a lot of sightings of the Flying Dutchman. Um, multiple sightings of the Flying Dutchman uh, have been recorded since the 18th century. Typically, these would occur near the Cape of Good Hope, of course, though multiple conditions needed to be met for the ship to appear. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go down this list of a lot lo- logic gates. <laughs> um, it was rarely spotted in favorable conditions. Go hmm. figure. Hmm. Though it could be seen in calm waters, it was more likely to appear during storms. Hmm. Many sightings claim to see the ship heading towards rocks before vanishing. Hmm. Some have seen it in fog or choppy waves. Hmm. I don't even know what we're humming about, but I'm just kind of joining in. Because he said logical <laughs> gatekeeper, so yeah. every time you go through one of these, you're like, bad eyesight? Yeah. Boom, against rocks. Driftwood? <laughs> yeah, we, if we apply like rigorous logic to this, there's like bad stuff. <laughs> Alright. Um, I want to see the Flying Dutchman. I'm going to go down to fucking Cape Town with some binoculars when it's like really choppy out there and just fucking look and see if I can find either the Flying Dutchman or um, Patrick and Swayze break. from oh. Point Break. Uh, well, there there are um, actually two two more requirements that you have to do to see the Flying Dutchman. All right. Well, let's read on then. Uh, no, I mean, like, oh. it's, I, I didn't put them on here, but if you're going to go down to, uh, Cape Town to look for it, you have to, uh, get or grow a giant, like, uh, fluffy white beard, and then get a long, like, wooden pipe <laughs> as well, and then, like, a hat that says captain, or just a captain's hat. I've been here for many moons, <laughs> looking yeah. out over the horizon of the and dangerous sea. She's a vengeful woman and yet has revealed her <laughs> secrets of the flying Dutchman. <laughs> and hey, equipping an eye patch is kind of like increasing your chances of getting a shiny Pokemon. So <laughs> go ahead and do that too. Can I tell you like a two second story about a guy I called the Flying Dutchman? 
why'd you call him the Flying Dutchman? Well, now, yes, I want to hear okay. the story. All right. I hate the Dutch, by the way. I have a real prejudice against the Dutch. Uh, well, it, the first step is admitting to it, so. <laughs> yeah. I know. I got to... I gotta be one of those guys who goes like goes to those reverse hate group therapy sessions Look, over the Dutch. <laughs> I'm, I'm, what I was about to say would be so awkward though, because you'd have like all of these people standing up being like, "I hate black people." Like, I hate Hi, the Jews. My name is Dave. I hate black people. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ron. I hate the Jews. Right. I'm so. Hi, I'm, I'm glad Harry. that you're I making the all these and clips and for all people to take of our damn episode. <laughs> Hi, my name is Max. I hate the Dutch. I hate the Dutch. What the fuck? What? There goes Alex's political career. Because all I have to do is go through that sentence and just start oh snipping God. it and we're putting just, it together. Yeah, we're taking that out of context for you, buddy. <laughs> okay. So my, Look my at sister... all the shit Alex said. <laughs> okay. My sister lived in Cape Town, right? For a while. She actually... Um, she lived in uh, Johannesburg and she did sort of, it wasn't the Peace Corps, but it was like the Peace Corps. She was there for a while and then she decided to stay because she met a guy who was Dutch and uh, she moved to Cape Town with him. He proposed to her. My, my sister was about 21, 22 at the time. And uh, she's, he says to her, I got to leave South Africa and go up to, uh, you know, Amsterdam to see my family because I'm Dutch. And uh, as it turns out, he had a fiance in the Netherlands. What the fuck? Yeah. So yeah. I started calling him the Flying Dutchman. And uh, <laughs> me and my friend... <laughs> my si again. I was about 23 at the time. And me and my friend Cassidy, best friend from high school, we actually had the money together to fly to South Africa to kick this guy's ass. Max, can I ask a question? Yes. Did you hate the Dutch before you were 23? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Just I've never trusted sure. I've never trusted them. Okay, listen. On on the flip side of that, it is not <laughs> the stance of the podcast that we hate the Dutch. No, this this uh, is a personal statement from Maxwell Murder. That is very much trust murders. Them. Yes. I uh, I was in the Netherlands and I got stoned and high as shit in that uh city Amsterdam. And they didn't try to rob me. So I love the, the Dutch. <laughs> I've never met a Dutch person, so I just believe the Dutch don't exist. I like that. That's good. That's kind of <laughs> that's kind of like a flat earther sort of thing. That's very plausible. <laughs> I mean, I, the I, amount I of like, in history of them, but I think, I, I think they're just made up. If I can't the, see him with me peepers. Yeah, I mean, tr truthfully, the amount of, like, truffles I consumed in Amsterdam, uh, I might have just been frolicking in a meadow. <laughs> like, well, maybe the Netherlands don't exist at all. Really years from now, we find out, we find out that, that Kirby was just never in the Netherlands at I know. all. <laughs> He was tripping balls. <laughs> or maybe he was just, he wasn't even in Amsterdam. He was he's tripping balls in like. To Florida, just yeah. like talking to crocodiles. Put See, like little, little, what are those fucking Dutch fucking wooden shoes? Oh, clogs. Clogs <laughs> on alligators. And they oh, helped him get through the swamp faster. He was probably, eat, <laughs> he was probably eating angel trumpets. Um, oh, God. Okay. I, okay, look. You know why I don't touch the Dutch? And I never have. Okay, so they're all this, like, free, fun-loving, like, liberal, I'm super white, I love everybody. But what about apartheid? What was that? <laughs> That's my deal. All right. Okay. One of the most famous disses, that's not a word, of science. is in Hobbit Town. Famous dis. <laughs> famous dis. This isn't the eleventy first birthday of someone. Um... Gosh, that's a good word. I like that, Kirby. Uh, sightings of the uh, came from King George V on July 11th, 1881. A prince at the time, George was taking part in a three-year journey around the world. Yeah, you're that telling me that motherfucker wasn't partying for three years? I'm sure, well, he, he saw some other shit, too. He's he a was church, back on his way through Europe. He's a Church of England guy, so he's not a Calvinist. So he's partying like a motherfucker, getting divorced, cutting the heads off of wives. That Prince, I bet Prince Andrew learned a thing or two from him, <laughs> if you know what I mean. 
I do know what you mean. <laughs> I got you, man. That's a good one. That's a that's a that's a deep cut. <laughs> Today, mother, I am gonna party like Prince Albert Victor from the 1640s. Look. Today, mother, I'm going to party with a 17 year old girl. Oh God. All right. So he was on a three year journey around the world, just fucking parting it up, drinking on a ship. Yelling at people, I bet. Um, with his brother, Prince Albert Victor. <laughs> like the the Prince Prince piercing was. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and their tutor, John Neil Dalton. He's just like, hey, you even lift, bro? I know, exactly. You even lift, bro? <laughs> Got to work on that tan, motherfucker. It's just him and his brother, like, we're going to bring the tutor, man. Fuck yeah. <laughs> man, oh, you are God. awesome. You are coming with us on this trip. All right. I'm years. just saying right now, as a show, if you were to do a historical comedy of Prince George on his three-year journey, that would be, it would be amazing. You could do such oh a good Taki Watini if he did that shit and yes. the other guy fucking yes. did. Oh, oh my god. god. That would be the you just pitched the best show ever oh, that will shit. never get never get made because you did it during a writer's strike. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, oh, you literally just did an elevator pitch. You're like Prince George V, his brother Albert, and their tutor on a three year voyage. We got Tiki. Tiki, tiki, what's this? Tiki Watiti. Tiki Watiti. And we got, uh, we got Tom Hardy as Prince Albert. Guys, it's Entourage meets Commander. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. This, Man, maybe this... I should move out to L.A. You Just should. Like, hopping into building oh, elevators. Be yes, like, exactly. That's a great idea. Somebody will be like, you, I love you. I'm an agent. Booking you. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, I think this podcast should become just us pitching shows from history. <laughs> oh God! Okay, all right. So while these fucking party animals were moored <laughs> at the Bass Strait of uh, the Australian coast between Melbourne and Sydney, the future king caught sight of the doomed ship. You see, was high. Um. This is the 4 a.m. log written by Prince George. Oh, good. This is going to be good. How should I? I'm going to do this in his voice. Okay. <laughs> uh, better, better. A strange light, a strange red light, as of a phantom ship, all aglow, in the midst of which lights the mast, spars, and sails of a brig 200 yards distant stood out in strong relief as she came up upon the port bow i'm now i just went into australian damn it okay hold on bring it back to england and do it in a bro voice oh perfect the officer of the watch on the bridge clearly saw her man as did the <laughs> quarter deck midshipman who was sent forward to come once to the fourth castle what is that but on arriving, there was no vestige, no or any sign of whatever any material ship was there, man, had to be seen, nor or right away to the horizon, the night being clear, and the sea was calm, dude, I swear to God. But, and like, I did totally no, smash a 12-pack of Bud Light <laughs> last night, so I might be seeing a few things. <laughs> He's, he's he's up at 4 a.m. <laughs> just cr crushing tall boys and just crushing them on his head. <laughs> Taking shots of Jaeger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Jaeger. Oh, well, Ye Jaeger's German. It's kind of close to the Dutch, so it, he might it might be, yeah. Um, <laughs> God damn it. Um, all together, 13 people saw the vessel. Uh, a sinister postscript was added to the original log six hours later. Basically, the guy who first spotted the ship fell from the cross dress on the foremast and died. This may have created the belief that the ship was cursed. No, he was yeah. like the first one to take a cake stand last night, so... <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, he, he he's the guy who brought the beer bong, and uh, he was really into it. So I think that putting him way up on the on the crow's nest was probably a bad idea. But at the time, it seemed all right. <laughs> Let's God just damn. blame it on the ghost ship. That way, we're yeah. pretty liability, bro. Exactly. <laughs> like, oh man, Dad, the king is gonna be so pissed that we killed this guy. Let's say he saw a ghost ship. All right. Um, I'm telling this, you, fantastic TV show. I know, this would be amazing. Jesus. Um, I guess my KD ratio is 1-0 now. <laughs> <laughs> it was 4 a.m. and I was pretty lit and I was doing fucking curls and I saw this ship, man. And then this guy fell from the mast and I think it was the ship's fault. Um, all right. Finally, in 1821 a ship supposedly made contact with the Flying Dutchman. They spotted it on the horizon through the light and steered to avoid it. However, the Dutchman also spotted them <laughs> and banked hard to come alongside the living ship. Once so closed... I just real quick want to make one quick correction. Yeah. Is that it's lightning, so just keep in mind this is happening during a fucking storm. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Okay. Um, once close enough, a ghostly, uh, undead sailor appeared on their deck, holding letters in his hand. They requested that one of the crewmen deliver the letters. They were addressed to old friends of the captain, Vanderdick. The ghostly sailor was promptly told by the living captain that even if they could deliver the papers, there's no point. Everyone they knew and loved is now dead. What an asshole. Also, carrying these letters of the dead is bad luck on a ship. Okay. Um, the disheartened sailor dropped the letters on the ground and cried a single tear and disappeared. Well, can I just... Okay. The crew threw the letters I have, overboard. I have so many feelings about this. I, I do too. So what it okay, you're the flying Dutchman, you are a cursed ghost pirate ship, essentially, yeah. going around like cursing other ships, and one of the sightings is just a poor sat being yeah. like we we, we got letters. all these letters. Yeah. Can, can you can you let our loved ones know how we're doing? Yeah, like, we're we're still around. We can't see them, but we want them to know that we're ghosts. It's so ignoble. Guys, it's, ob it's, it's pretty obvious, okay? I mean, it's been 500 years, and Amsterdam <laughs> still hasn't connected with the ghostly post office. So, very clearly, they had been writing these letters to, like, nobody in particular for the last, like, 10 years. And, like, fuck, how do we send this? You know? Yeah. USPS doesn't cover death. Yeah. Like DHL isn't gonna like come pick this shit up in the fucking after afterlife. It's just, it's just so. It's kind of mean. I don't like that they didn't take the letters. Well, it, yeah, but it's just so like. <laughs> it's a terrible what's ghost the, sighting. What's the word I'm looking for? Like anticlimactic. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> like... Literally, like them asking if you could do their yeah. taxes for them. I know. <laughs> no, we've got like hundreds of years of back taxes here and the Dutch East India Company <laughs> really, really, really likes us to get these in promptly and we're wor we're worried. We're really worried. We're worried they're going to come after us. And then I mean, some the of them have TPS reports. Like, I they got to get in. American oh, Express is somehow already over here um, <laughs> and demanding that we pay our debts. Like, we've got so many fucking uh, travel points from the Dutch East India Company that we can't use. Um, hmm. Okay, we're gonna go into fact. Travel for, points. Fact, <laughs> travel points yeah. We got like two hundred years worth of sailing travel points. Yeah, and I'm the just Dutch trying to go to Ghost Hawaii for the summer. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> we're we've been stuck in South Africa for so long, dudes. This sucks. I want to use my fucking travel points. I was just about to say, yeah, the, all the letters were just like requests for PTO. <laughs> <from the company. laughs> Can I stop or, serving this ghost ship already? Uh, Fuck. Or, or yeah, it's like the captain sending letters like, this fucking crew keeps mutinying, and 
I think they're ghosts and the crew's sending letters to the to to their loved ones saying like we were just drinking in a bar and then we woke up on this ship and now we're dead. What the fuck? All right. They're, they're just like, "Hey, we kind of got a mail problem over here. Can you send <laughs> someone to be the mail guy for us?" I would think that the Dutch East India Company at its height was actually really good at delivering shit. Just they probably had it down. But you had to wait, you know, anywhere between like six weeks to three years to get your stuff, depending on, you know, the route. But you'd get it. Yeah. All right. What's the ancient Amazon? <laughs> no, but better. You they they'd get it to you instead of lying about your no, lost man. The Mongolians had ancient Amazon. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you'd, you'd either you'd either get your package. Or a horde of Mongols would come and destroy your village and burn it <laughs> to the ground. They, they had, like, one of the first recorded fucking, like, post office systems. That's true. I mean, okay, Genghis Khan, I'll pronounce it correctly. Genghis Khan um, was pretty smart in, in, in that he, when he conquered something, he gave them a lot of infrastructure. He also fucked a lot of their women. I yes. think something like a third of all Asian dudes uh, are descended from Genghis Khan. He was also, like, ruthless. Like, yeah. if you surrendered, it was like, great, all right, you're part of the empire, we'll give you yeah. infrastructure, you know, you help us, we'll help you. If yeah. you didn't surrender, <laughs> fucking raped and slaughtered everybody. Yeah. They're like, kill the men, keep the pregnant women, because those are my kids. Dude. All right, we're gonna get into some fact versus fiction. I this is my favorite part because we talk about the bunkers and the debunkers, and me myself, I am a bunkin. Uh, That's pretty good. <laughs> I like that transition. Thank you. <laughs> um, Maxwell murder is a bunker, not a debunker. Whether the Flying Dutchman existed or not is a matter of debate, of course. However, it's worth noting a few basic facts. The Cape of Good Hope was a notorious place for ship disasters at sea. Uh, located on the Atlantic coast, off, the Cape, off of the Cape Peninsula in South Africa, this rocky headland was initially called Cape of Storms, or God's Asshole. Um, <laughs> well, I not, that, don't put that in your college papers. After a night of drinking those Bud Lights with Prince George. <laughs> And uh, actually, no, I think, I think actually God's asshole was, uh, up North and that, that is the devil's anus, the Cape of Good Hope. Can you imagine if somebody fucking quotes our podcast, it would be like, (laughs) so like Prince Albert and like his bro were just fucking raging for a night, like Alpha Omega style. And, uh, and I guess off the cope of God's asshole, uh, yeah. they saw uh, a fucking magical ghost ship, bro. That yeah, dude is fucking awesome. Uh, and I crushed a few more fucking tall boys and went to bed. Um, it was known for its unpredictable weather, strong currents, and tre- treacherous rocky outcrops. Kirby, you were a sailor. Were you ever in that area? Nope. Okay. <laughs> And then ends that conversation. No, yep. <laughs> no, I, okay. Short, sweet, to the point. No, we don't I've really never, send carriers down there, but whatever. I've never been to South Africa. My dad has. In fact, that's where my dog is from. Oh, really? Yeah, you got a, cool. a husky rescue center in South Africa. Dude. You guys got, got a husky? That's great. Huskies living in South Africa. Well... Yeah, it does yeah. get cold in some areas, but yeah, those poor huskies, Jesus Christ. I know, it's, it was kind of sad. Oof. That's really sad, yeah. Uh, it was probably the Dutch that brought huskies down there, because they're just a bunch of assholes. <laughs> but this episode is not helping Max's <laughs> Dutch prejudice. It's not. Uh, it's in, not in, <laughs> in general, the Cape of or the Cape of Good Hope is a really, 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 really dangerous cape. So whether yeah, or yeah, not it is. they see the uh, the fucking um, flying Dutchman, there's a good chance they're going to crash if they're thinking they can take a head on uh, into a storm, you know? 
Yeah, I mean, pretty much. Uh, what, what do we have now? We've got the what's the canal that goes that that like separates Europe and Asia? What's that called? It's the um, Suez Canal. Yes. Maybe, yes. Where up by Egypt? Yeah. So yeah. like now, you you can. I mean, back then you had to like if you're coming, say this is up here. Um, people can't see this, but this is my PowerPoint present presentation. Up here is the Netherlands, and if you're in a sail to Asia. You can either go up to where there's ice and you can't get through, so you got to go down around Africa and come back up to Asia, and that is uh, a ship voyage. Now you can just go whoop, through the Suez Canal. Um, all right, I went through the Panama Canal on a cruise once. That's cool. Yeah, I've always wanted to do that. That, that does was sound fun. The cruise sucked, but that part, like, going through the, like, locks, because you basically go up to the top of it, and then they turn around. They don't actually go through it to the Pacific, because it was a Caribbean cruise. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It was cool, though. That was my favorite part. Um, anyways, since it was a shortcut through, uh, th sh it was a shortcut through routes, many crazy-ass captains, those are the best captains, did try to navigate the waters. So, What's the other way? I guess they they could. I don't know. I don't know what's it. I'm, Basically, I'm... they were trying to do shortcuts. When you get yeah. truckers driving across the U.S., they have their own little shortcuts. This a sailor shortcut, but it's a very dangerous one. So generally, it's better to just go around rather than navigate. That that makes sense. Um, I got another uh, Navy question for you, Kirby. Sure. On uh, your car carrier, uh, did you have a crazy-ass captain running it? No, actually, we had a pretty cool captain. Oh, okay, cool. Nice. Yeah. All right, that's good. He was just a regular <laughs> captain. I didn't ever really see him. <laughs> I like how you're tossing Kirby these, like, questions, and they're just, like, it's like he, he was just actually... ended a sentence. <laughs> they're just, like, not starters. He was actually a pretty good captain. He wasn't crazy at all. In fact, he was very sane, um, very level-headed. Uh, he did make us all jump off the carrier one time, but the whatever. No, um, I mean we did. Okay. Anyway, let's let's get back to the episode. Yeah. I just one day we're gonna do a whole episode about Kirby on the carrier. No, we're not. Kirby. Curb... <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that won't happen. Sorry. All right. However, there is no account of Van Der Decken in the annals of history. Or annals of history. <laughs> Dude, I prefer <laughs> annals of history. For sure. I do too. Um, there, is a, there is a Dutch captain named Bernard Falk, though. <laughs> he made... He made supernaturally quick sea voyages between Java and the Netherlands. I'm so surprised none of us made any jokes, but continue. Yeah, I know. I won't. On his name. Folk. Fuck. What was his first name? Bernard. 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 Bernard Fuck. What a shitty name. <laughs> I mean, it, it would be a great uh, OnlyFans account. Yes, it would. Bernard Fucks. <laughs> Spelled that way. <laughs> Bernard Fuchs. Um, and all he does is like little dioramas of ships. Well, it's just so, like I get it done quick. My girlfriend has been pitching my own OnlyFans channel where I build Lego sets in the nude. What do you guys think? I mean, I'm not going to watch it, but yeah. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> I. Okay. I. Okay. I. Okay. <laughs> So I have two concerns. One, I like building Legos. And I do too. As you can every see. Time, if every time I build a goddamn Lego set, I have to think about you being <laughs> naked, showing your balls on the internet while building a Lego set, it's gonna ruin for it's It's gonna ruin it for me. All right. Oh. The second point, B, uh -huh. is that Legos are generally, generally, they shouldn't be, but generally associated with children so i feel like being naked while oh, building shit. Legos oh, God. is a little weird i didn't even think about that fuck you know i i do want to point out 
Max. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. I and we probably shouldn't tell Alex this, but I too build Lego sets. Fuck <laughs> acts naked. <laughs> Just <laughs> sitting here, and you know the pieces will drop between my balls, and I'll have to yeah. reach down there. All right, and... all right. So I just want to say, what did you guys used to work like at a drug manufacturer? Like <laughs> you fucking had to be naked, so you weren't stealing the well, drugs while you're packaging them. Like what? Where is this coming from? It was kind of weird. You, where it where was do you think they got the story for Breaking Bad? Exactly. Basically, it was us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, basically, it was a weird. It was a weird time when Kirby and I were, were roommates for a couple of years, and we were building Lego sets, and uh, I said, we should do these naked, and he said, why? I was like, so we don't steal any of the pieces, and then we were building them naked, and then Simon came in and said, why are you guys naked? And we said, so we don't lose any of the pieces, and he said, that's stupid, so we put clothes on. That's okay. the end of my this story. Is what, that never <laughs> happened. <laughs> I he said that so well, though. I believe it 100%. I believe I, it. I built Lego sets in my room on my cloth uh, Lazy Boy naked. But so I don't build Lego but, sets naked in front of other people. I'm not going to start an OnlyFans. What, what you're, I was just, well, that you should, though. But you're, miss, you're just missing out. You're, you're not making money when you should be making money. You got it. You got a camera. You got a computer. You got Legos, and you got your balls. So I show the world your balls piece of balls for fifteen dollars a month. Exactly. Man, I'm gonna charge a lot for my Lego build movies. Um, because Legos are expensive. <laughs> 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 okay. All right. So this uh this this fuck guy, uh, this led to rumors that he had made a pact with the devil. Satan. Though, during this time, during his time alive or dead, he was never connected with the Flying Dutchman. Later, armchair detectives, our favorite detectives, were actually would actually be the ones to do that. Assholes. Those are the debunkers. Um, how did he make this ship go so fast, though? This is, I'm actually very curious about this. It's rumored that he had his ships fitted with iron arm yards instead of wooden ones. What this are arm the... yards? Uh, I'm pretty sure they're the things that wrap around the ship. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So like basically, irons... like when they kind of keep the hull, like yeah, it's yeah. structured for the hull. Kind yeah. Of. But... So like they bend, bend around, so he had like metal ones. And st so he had iron sides, really. Yeah, he yeah, was a okay. step ahead of everybody. Yeah. Um. This allowed him to weather storms that other captains could not. I don't know how that would make him weather storms better, because I feel like wood bends a lot better, you know? Whereas, like, metal also gets cold, and they probably didn't have great steel back then, so it could get brittle. I don't know. I mean, I think it just held the ship together better. I mean, yeah, okay. Because he was able to go into storms that other captains well, survived them. I think he's probably the coolest guy in this whole story. <laughs> Um, finally, most of the sightings occurred during storms. So, of course, it's an ill omen. Um, yeah, right? Oh, man, you're going to ruin this shit? Damn. Oh, <laughs> so they think he was the Flying Dutchman. Yeah. Physically. Because there's no, there's no record of Vander Dicken. Uh, so he, but this guy, Falk, was real. And apparently, like, could get whatever contraband you wanted. Like wait, to wait, wait, wait. It. All right. So just to be clear, was Falk during the 1800s or? Uh, it doesn't say. Like it I... doesn't explain Prince George. Like it doesn't explain the 1881 or 1821 sightings, uh, uh, right? Uh, those, are just, actually, those are just sightings. So okay, we're we're about to lay it down. Here's here's how it works. Okay. When a Hit me with it. When a story is circulating in, like, the Fisher Tales, you know, it's yep. going to go from, hey, this guy makes the, the voyage really fast to, holy shit, what this guy do to make the voyage really fast to? This guy must have made a pact the devil to make this voyage. Yeah. Dude, this guy was rounding the Cape of Hope, and, you know, he defied the gods themselves and yeah. then got struck down for it. You know? Yeah. It's it's a game of telephone. So gotcha, yeah, gotcha. yeah. So this guy is supposedly like within the 17th century. 
like yeah, when yeah. Dander yeah. Dick was supposed to be around. So gotcha. if we have, if we had, okay. you know, quote unquote armchair detectives putting this together, probably like, oh, maybe it was this fuck guy. But more, gotcha, gotcha. more importantly than that, science actually has a reason for yeah. the sightings of uh, the Flying Dutchman, and we're going to get into that right now. I'm in- interested in this. Okay, so we're going to ruin some magic with science. Um, so what the fuck did all these sailors see? Sailors and royalty. Uh, science says it's a combination of St. Elmo's fire and Fata Morgana. St. Elmo's fire, we're going to define it. St. Uh, Aramis coined the name for this strange weather phenomenon. It, occur- it occurs in stormy weather and is roughly the same thing that happens to neon lights. What? Okay. Electrical charges in the air start to tu- start a tug of war with electrical charges on the ground, and the resulting vo- voltage uh, fractures air molecules. Oh, yeah, I know exactly what this is. Um, these molecules start to glow, and since our air is mostly oxygen, nitrogen, the uh, result- resulting effect is a blue-violet color. That is... Perfect for glowing ass ghost ships. <laughs> um, yeah, so St. Elmo's and, fire is a real thing. It's it's like it's ball. It's kind of like ball lightning. But you've, if you've got a storm, you've got like molecules shaking, and then you've got like water. And you've, if they're grounded, you're gonna get a charge, and it's gonna ignite the nitrogen in the air because air is what like sixty percent nitrogen, seventy percent nitrogen on the planet. So you're gonna get a blue sort of like. Psh- now, so if if we look at the actual sightings of the uh, of the Flying Dutchman, you know, you got the sightings during storms, which are like the main component of them. Yeah, yeah. And then you got people saying that you know they saw outside of storms. They probably saw outside of storms is Fata Morgana, which we're gonna talk yeah. about here in a sec. But uh, I, I'm interested in Fata Morgana too. Um, essentially, a lot of those other ones are like. Yes, ands. You know. Yeah, oh, of course. You you saw a mermaid. Well, I saw a flying Dutchman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so we could rule out a lot of that. And suddenly, these sightings start to fall into place. Like if they're seeing yeah. during storms, uh, they're witnessing Saint Elmo's fire. Yeah. So yeah, and I, uh, they're also if so, if you if you're towards the pole, you also could be seeing like uh, the Northern Lights or even like. There's a lot of like weird phenomena that happens at the poles. So like you know the you know the the, the this would be the southern lights, right? You'd still you still see them because the Earth's magnetic field is is bouncing off uh, the sun's rays and creating these really cool lights that um, you can take some mushrooms and watch. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, Feta Fata Morgana. Named after Morgan Le Fay of Arthurian legend. <laughs> Morgana, the dirty witch. <laughs> uh, these are basically optical illusions, or a more common name, mirages. In a nutshell, it has to do with heating layers of the atmosphere and the bending of light as it hits the boundary between the layers. Your brain can't comprehend this, so it assumes you're looking at something straight. Um, I like that. That, that That's a good one. Something straight. <laughs> the actual Fata Morgana occurs when these conditions line up just right to refract an image over the curvature of the Earth, which would make a ship appear and disappear over the horizon and even appear to be floating just above the water on air. The decline those are of cool pictures, just FYI. Everyone should go look yeah. up pictures of those because they are it yeah. is really cool. It's it's, uh, to- it's it's cool. It's essentially an image of the ship reflected to you over the ocean. Yeah. Which Exactly. You know, your brain's trying to compensate for the curvature of the earth, but it, it can't at that like yeah. level. So it takes the ship and it thinks you're seeing it head so- on. Well, so I have a very serious concern. So how is this possible if 
the earth is flat. <laughs> well, it's not. It's not. And if you are that low on the, you know, plane of this flat earth, there's some weird shit that goes on down there, usually related to the earth being hollow, which the earth is also flat and hollow. So these yes, are images. That makes sense. Okay. Yes. Okay. These makes are images. Fucking sense. <laughs> what are we, a fucking siphon? I think <laughs> it makes it makes perfect sense. A well, funnel? I'll ju- I'll just say that a lot of flat earthers also believe the earth is hollow. <laughs> um so this We're is probably a pizza box. <laughs> Have they just denied depth and weight? Like just actually, out yeah. physics? They, they Oh, they hate physics. Um and most of them are I mean we gotta mention it. This is towards the end of the episode, but always gotta mention it. They're uh, usually like anti Semitic. They hate they because all of this stuff, uh you know, there's a lot of Jewish physicists. So you know, science is just Jew lies, as I've heard. It always comes yes. back to the Nazis. Because yep. all science is done by only Jews. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. If you ask a flat earther anything about Einstein, man, not good. Yeah, because I'm sure Einstein was real into fucking Jewish religion. I'm sure that Actually, motherfucker. He was. Technically, he wasn't religious, right? But he was asked to be um, the first prime minister of Israel, and he turned it down. Um, well, that's a shame because Israel's a fucking shit show right now, and might have been a little bit better if Einstein was the prime minister. Uh, honestly, he, they might have got off on a better foot. Yeah, because uh, their parliament is uh, a mess. I won't go into politics, anyways. Um, but actually, I, the reason I mentioned Einstein is because so. Um, to prove a lot of to prove one of his theories, uh, his special relativity, right? Um, he actually had to, or not special relativity, actually just relativity. Sorry, my bad. Um, he had to uh, basically witness light bending around something dense, and he was able to do it during a uh, total solar eclipse with the telescope that another Jew made, um, and he was able to prove his his theory. Because he could see light bending around the sun. Quick PSA, shout out to everybody. Look up, uh, there's going to be a total solar eclipse next year, April yeah. 28th, 2024. Um, that's going to go uh, across the United States, like southwest to northeast, yeah. just FYI. And yeah. it's going to be and a total eclipse in my heart. It is. And as we know, the moon is not real, so that's why eclipses happen. All right. So, how did <laughs> how did uh, the decline of sailing ships affect? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna get there, man. Uh, the, All right. Um, yeah. Decline. So, so the decline of sailing ships means that spotting one in a mirage is exceedingly rare. Thus, the decline of the Flying Dutchman sightings after the turn of the 20th century. Hey, good job, guys. All right. Time is it? Is that is that a record? Yeah. And I think that's a pretty good uh, a good time to go out. We should yeah. do our goodbyes. Uh, yeah. Uh, can I just say one thing about um, the Flying Dutchman? Okay. If I ever see that motherfucker who fucked my sister over, I'm going to put a foot in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I want to thank John Zara uh, for allowing us to use Old Lang Syne uh, as the ending uh, song to the episode. Uh, all, our, is, all, our Twitch, all our Twitch mods today, uh, that is Big Dizzy, uh, that is 8-I-G-D-Z, and... What up, Dizzy? I think that's it. You guys ready to go out? Yeah. All oh, right. no, I got a shout-out real quick. Sorry. Um, I got a shout-out to my sister, Maddie, uh, mm-hmm. for preventing me from flying to South Africa to assault a man and probably get arrested there. So right. nice. <laughs> thanks, Maddie. So my name is Kenny Crook Irish Kirby. Uh keep it weird. My name is uh Maxwell Murder. And I've got my 40 ounce and a system to overthrow for the WGA. 
and my legal name is first special middle guest last <laughs> Alex <laughs> and I hope you all have a wonderful night <laughs> that was really nice of you bud alright great job guys yeah, that was a good one. I like the Flying Dutchman. Um, yeah, uh, I had something, but I forgot. It's okay. Oh, I, that's right. I was going to show you guys my new pants, but they're kind of hard to see. So I'm just going to... I got these cool bondage pants that my girlfriend hates. <laughs> <laughs> these cool bondage pants? Yeah. You know, they're punk rock, man. I had, these, I had the exact same pair when I was 17, except now... They're stretchy. They're it's like wearing yoga pants. It's so comfortable. What are you is it, and what are you building in the background? Uh, that's already been built. It's just kind of been trashed. It's the Daily Bugle. Oh, was, that's dope yeah. as shit. Yeah. Did you build it yourself or was it a set? Uh, it's a set. Everything I have is I a set. I didn't realize you could buy that. Yeah, it was like four hundred dollars. Yeah, I've I, so I've been getting. I just built BD one. Oh, nice. Um, I, I have that, 